video, we wanted to show you a model on how to estimate how much time savings you would be seeing when using API mocks to parallelize work. This model will be useful for teams who want to improve time to market and reliability in predicting time to market by using API mocking. And you can start very easily by just onboarding one team. Okay, let's have a look at that. So um, one of the uh, terms used by customers when they approach this is API first development and API first development aided with API mocks. So in this first Gantt chart, what we see is team B that's developing APIs, which will be then consumed by team A, which is developing a, a feature that is relying on those APIs. And then we're doing, uh, they're doing some integration testing. So if those teams work in sequence, uh, they're going to be releasing to production on day 37, 38. Okay. If you choose to use API mocking and follow the API first development paradigm, what happens is uh, both teams A and B would define APIs be between their systems before they start working. Um, so this is the first time team A would be using uh, API mocking, they would need to get trained in using Traffic Parrot or, or the mocking tool that they choose to use. And there's some time needed to create those actual mocks to get unblocked. Then they continue developing their feature with mocks. And then we're doing a real API integration testing, testing between team A and CB. And we're adding here one more day for the testing just compared to what it was before because there might be some assumptions made in the mocks. Uh, that uh, will result in some fixes that had to be made. So in this case, when you parallelize the work, you're going to production on day 27 instead of day 38. So you're already saving quite a lot of time. Um, some teams choose to go even further and uh, they allow the vendor to create the mocks for them, especially with third-party APIs where um, uh, that API is available um, on the internet and the vendor can access it and create the mocks for them. Okay, And in that case, um, you can go to production on day 21 instead of 38, so uh, quite much earlier. Mm -hmm. So what we've seen with our customers is um, this, um, in, when you look at this scenario in a world of microservices, for example, there's going to be multiple teams involved that uh, can work in parallel action. And this is based, uh, this is an example that's based on what we've seen with one of our customers where multiple teams uh, were working in parallel eventually. But if you looked at the schedule, if they had been working um, in sequence, uh, Team D would be developing third-party service integrations, then Team A would pick up those APIs or service integrations and do number lookup APIs, then Team B would do customer provisioning services and APIs, and then Team A would be doing number porting APIs and services, and that would be in production on day 71. And what happens here is team A realizes they're on the hook and there's a lot of things that could go wrong until day 60 with team B, C's and D's work. So they decide uh, to do what we've seen in this phase diagram, so parallelize the work with team B. So then team B and team A work in parallel. And what happens then is they're on, in production on day 67 instead, instead of 71. Some gain there, uh, but what happened for this customer was they actually decided to go all the way and all teams worked in parallel. And when that happened, um, in this example, instead of going to production on day 31, instead of going to production on day 71, uh, they went to production on day 31. So that's 40 days uh, faster to market. Okay. There's a few key assumptions about this model that are worth mentioning that might not be the case for you, that were the case for this particular team. For example, uh, both producer and consumer teams had to define those APIs and they were working closely to define those APIs. And it was the consumer teams that were defining the mocks, not the producer team.
which we see both of these scenarios actually apply depending on the case for some of our customers. Some of our customers would do API, uh, the producer teams would create the APIs, uh, API mocks, and for some of uh, another group of our customers, the mocks would be created by the consumer teams. Okay? So if any of these assumptions do not match yours, please feel free to reach out to us, trafficpower.com slash contact HTML, and we'd be more than happy to prepare, uh, discuss your constraints and prepare, prepare a model for you. Um, so having said that, uh, we've got a sheet that actually calculates here how much money uh, you might be losing um, if uh, you're not applying service virtual uh, API mocking uh, today. So we got teams A to D and uh, how much uh, work they need to do. And that's from taken from the Gantt chart above. Um, then how long is each team blocked waiting for API? So there's some formulas here, as you can see, uh, put in. And that means that uh, team A is wa waiting 60 days. Now we can confirm that on this Gantt chart. Indeed, uh, they can only start on day 61 working because they're blocked. Uh, how long to define the APIs? Um, this is based on this customer's example, um, but uh, you can put in your numbers here. Uh, how long to get up to speed with Traffic Parrot or the API mocking tool you choose to? Four days here. And uh, all of those blue uh, fields or cells are inputs, so you can change those if you wanted to. Uh, how long to create the API mocks to get unblocked? Um, one to five days uh, for each of these teams. And uh, that's another assumption worth mentioning here, which is uh, the teams can choose to implement more mocks based on these sheets, uh, based on other sheets that we have and other models and have more um, return on investment, for example, faster build times, uh, higher quality because they're testing more hypothetical situations, etc. In this model, we're only focusing on the bare minimum of mocks that we need to be able to parallelize the work, okay? Then uh, we also see some teams that they need to spend some time to um, resync the API mocks if the APIs change, it wasn't the case for this team, but sometimes it's worth keeping in mind that if the APIs are fresh and the data model is new, you might need uh, some time to resync the APIs and then uh, how long to integrate with the real APIs when they are ready. So adding that all up, uh, we come up with uh, these numbers. There are some formulas here you can see, but uh, basically what this means is the, the result is that if we take those numbers, uh, we arrive in production 40 days early. And that's reducing the risk of features as promised to our investors, shareholders, etc. by 40 days, which is a significant number uh, because um, you can again see that on these uh, gun charts. So we were going to production on day 71, now we're going to thir on 31, which is 40 days, right? So that's already a significant um, improvement and it reduces our risk of delivering the feature uh, to production as promised to our investors, shareholders, customers, etc. But on top of that, what we can do is assign a number and say, how much would you be willing to pay to deliver this uh, feature early per day? And uh, one way of looking at this is how much revenue would be this feature generating if it was available to your users per day in the next 12 months. And what we're saying is, for this example, it was $5,000. Um, we're also looking at some costs for the API mocking tool. We're just putting a sample number here, $50,000. Uh, but if you wanted to get a specific quote for Traffic Pirate, if you choose to use Traffic Pirate, please contact sales at trafficpirate.com. This is just a number to have something in the sheet. And yeah, so the cost of delay of not using API mocking or Traffic Parrot API mocking for this feature alone is um, 40 days times 5,000 a day minus the cost 50,000 
which is $150,000 already for this just one feature where those four teams are working on. And what we see with our customers is the minute they introduce API mocking um, and to parallelize work, um, the teams will continue working that way. So uh, in this example, they could actually in the next 12 months work on three features like that. So that adds up to actually more than a half a million of dollars of um, savings here that you could observe. Okay, so I hope you found this model useful. And um, if, if you would like to see different models uh, or some of the assumptions that we mentioned here about this model do not fit your a company's profile or the way you uh, develop software, please feel free to contact us and we'd be more than happy to discuss your constraints and prepare a model for them. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.